Aliens in the Mind. Co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius. When Flora Keary is murdered, Lark and Cornelius decide to tell her father, the MP Ian Sanderson, that he is himself a mutant, able to be manipulated by the unidentified controller, the same person who ordered his daughter's death. Shocked and horrified, Sanderson agrees to help them trace the organization back to its source. Their search finally leads them to an educational trust with headquarters at a merchant bank in the city. We've been looking at this education trust as something which has developed quite naturally out of the situation on Lewick. I thought we were all agreed on that. What, from one tiny island? A few hundred simple, hard-working, God-fearing crofters organizing this, this fellowship, this education trust? But what's the alternative? That Lewig may have started as an accident of nature, but it has been deliberately built up, exploited, for the sole purpose of producing mutants who can be groomed for high office, like Ian here, or, or Brigadier Sherman. And half the names on Ian's list, I shouldn't be surprised. Right. Y you mean it's been set up like a sort of mutant breeder unit? More like a stud farm. Oh, it's horrible. Yes, especially when you think of Molly Kyle and the Reverend Donald Schular as the farmers. Oh, farm managers, more likely. Now, if you're right, then the real villains, the masterminds of this business, are hiding behind the facade of this merchant bank. All this plate glass opulence around us. <clears throat> Excuse me, gentlemen. Sir Graham is free to see you now. Just a minute. Who was that who just came out? That was Sir Graham's last appointment, sir. The Reverend Donald Schooler. There he is now, sir. Just going towards the main door. Do you know him by any chance? Oh, yes. <laughs> we know him all right. And the man he's talking to now. Oh, do you, sir? That's Sir Graham's chauffeur. But he's the man who has been waiting outside my flat for two and a half hours. And sure as hell he wasn't waiting for a bus. Part six. Final Tribulations. Come in, if you please, gentlemen. Sir Graham will see you now. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, come in, Ian. <laughs> it's nice to see you again. <laughs> Thank you, You Graham. seem to have been away for ages. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Graham, uh, may I introduce John Cornelius, the eminent brain surgeon? Mr. Cornelius. It's good of you to see us, Sir Graham. And Professor Curtis Lark. Uh, Professor. Hello, sir. <laughs> nice office you have here, Sir Graham. Must be a good working environment. Perfect. <laughs> but then luxury always is. Yes. <laughs> Won't you sit down, gentlemen? Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Now, what rings two such unlikely visitors through the hallowed portals of a merchant bank? Money. What else, Sir Graham? Well, at least you've come to the right man. We sincerely hope so. Well, tell me all about it. What's your problem? We've just returned from the Isle of Lewig. Do you know the Isle of Lewig, Sir Graham? Well, of course I do. I was born there. What a coincidence. What? Oh, you mean because of Ian? Not really. Were you also educated on the island, Sir Graham? To start with, of course, but then my family emigrated to Canada. Oh, but that was years and years ago. Uh, Graham, was the Lewig Educational Trust in existence in those days? Of course not, Ian. That wasn't until just before the war, uh, 1938 or 9. Hmm. Could you tell us who established the trust? I did. It's always been very much my own private... Um, Benefaction? Uh, yes, something like that. Uh -huh. In gratitude for all the favors received. And in lively expectation of further favors to come. Hmm? Oh, that's a nice turn of phrase you have, Professor. Well, it's not original, I'm afraid. Indeed not. I believe it was her said of King John. Oh, you know everything. <laughs> Sir Graham, do you know anything about the island sickness? Island sick. What island sickness? On Louis Graham. Oh, that. Oh, that's nothing much. Nothing much. Do you realize that the incidence of mental disorientation in the young is higher on this one tiny island with a population of a few hundred than it is in the rest of the United Kingdom? You call that nothing much, Sir Graham. 
It's the biggest nothing much I've ever heard of. Put like that, Professor, I might agree it sounds horribly impressive. But as I understand it, this uh, sickness is no more than a, a passing phase, like growing pains. Uh, the point is, Graham, that whatever this sickness is, it didn't turn out to be a passing phase with my daughter. Your... I didn't even know you had a daughter. No. I think I'd almost forgotten it myself. Until last week. Why, what happened last week? My daughter was murdered. Murdered? My poor Ian. I had no idea. Oh, but this is awful. Terrible. I can't tell you how appalled I am. Don't you want to know who did it? Hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, of course I do. So do we. It was two complete strangers. Strangers to us, that is. But why, Ian? In God's name, why? We hoped you might hazard a guess, Sir Graham. I don't know why you should think that. Don't you? Anyway, the, the point is that I'd like to make some sort of lasting memorial to her. Of course you would. What I had in mind was... Some sort of grant to allow proper research into the causes of this island sickness. On Luig? Where else? It sounds a marvellous idea. We thought you'd like it. And I was wondering if you'd be prepared to let the Trust sponsor it. The Trust? Now, why not, Sir Graham? Isn't the aim of the Trust to improve conditions for the islanders? Uh, well, yes, yes. <laughs> In a way, I suppose. Well, believe me, this would improve their lot. A lot. Oh, uh, excuse me a moment. Yes, Charles? Uh, Lady McCladen has arrived, Sir Graham. Oh, ask her to wait just a few... No, 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 on second thoughts, ask her to come straight up. Very good, Sir Graham. I hope you don't mind, gentlemen. I'm meant to be taking my wife to lunch. Oh, no, <laughs> not. oh it's ages since I saw her last. Is your wife also a native of Luig, Sir Graham? Oh, no, no, no. She was born in Canada, actually. Oh, well. That's where I first met her. But she does take a great interest in affairs on the island. Oh, yes, indeed. she want to know a great deal about this suggestion of yours. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean... No, no, no. It's quite all right, dear. Come on in. Well, if you're sure. You, uh, you know Ian, of course. Of course. <laughs> It's been so long, I'm in danger of forgetting what you look like, Ian. <laughs> now, let me introduce you to Mr. John Cornelius, the brain surgeon. Mr. Cornelius. How do you do, Lady And Martin? Professor Curtis Lark. You're not Curtis Lark, the author, are you? Well, I do write the odd book or two, ma'am, yes. I've just read one of them. Well, thank you. I'm gratified to find I'm not my only reader. No, no seriously. I find your predictions of the future use of telepathy and telekinesis quite fascinating. Yes. It is a fascinating subject. And not a little frightening. Oh, forgive me, I've obviously broken up something terribly important. On the contrary, your arrival could be quite opportune. Here, sit down, my dear. Here. We hope you might be able to persuade Sir Graham to support our scheme. It's a modest medical research grant. Well, that seems a worthy enough cause. What do you intend to research? Mental illness, Lady McLaughlin. On a tiny Scottish island called Lewig. Lewig? But there's no mental illness on Lewig. Oh, but there is, I assure you. The so-called island sickness is almost approaching an epidemic. They want the Trust to uh, sponsor the idea. If they're serious, why not? It sounds a marvellous idea. That's what your husband said. Exactly what your husband said. Word for word. Of course, we'd have to put it to the other trustees. Oh, I thought it was a private trust. Uh, Graham did say... That he set up the trust? Mm. Oh, he did. As agent for the trustees. Uh, could we approach them? Well, I don't see why not. When? When what? Oh, when could we put it to them? Tonight, if you like. Well, Graham and I are both trustees and the chief executor is dining with us. Three gives a quorum. Well, then you'd better come to dinner. You can put your proposition en masse. Uh, what? All three of us? Why not? The more, oh. the merrier. Well, what a splendid idea. We'd love to come, wouldn't we? Yes, I guess we would at that. I'll make it 8 for 8.30, then. We'll send a car for you. Then you won't have to worry about driving home. That is most awfully kind of you.
drink? Curtis? No, thanks. I want to have that wide awake feeling all evening. You have a suspicious mind, dear boy. I don't expect it'll be anything but a perfectly ordinary dinner party. Yes, except that we could find ourselves playing footsie with a controller. You think it's McLuddon, don't you? Well, I don't know. But it's not a bad position for a controller to be in, now, is it? I mean, head of a merchant bank, finger in every pie, pulling every string. Sounds awfully messy. It sounds terribly legitimate. What better front could a controller have? Well, you're right about that. Every snippet of information in the right hands could be worth a million dollars. Don't you have pounds over here anymore? Oh, yes, yes. But they're not the same as those we used to know and love. How does my bow tie look? <laughs> Terrible and tired. Why did you buy a clip-on like mine? Oh, that's most uncivilized. Besides, I'd be terrified of you falling into the soup. Well, it might improve the taste. <laughs> now, who on earth's that? Want me to get it? No, 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 no. I'll go. All right, all right, I'm coming. Oh, Major Benson. May I come in? Yes, of course. Go straight through Phew, to the door. The smell of camphor. It's Major Manson. Good evening, Professor. Oh, good evening, Major. Will you join me in a drink? Scotch. Straight? A little water, please. Okay. I thought you weren't going to drink tonight, Curtis. Well, I changed my mind. This monkey suit of mine smells so much of mothballs, it's making my eyes water. Hmm. You should give that jacket a good brush. Does that get rid of the smell? No, but it scares the hell, hell out, out of the moths. I say, I say, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind us, Major. <laughs> you are Major News to you. <laughs> Cheers. Why don't you take the weight off your feet and... Tell us the news. Well, you've certainly stirred up a hornet's nest. Colonel Gulliver's with the Home Secretary now. Well, I'm glad to see someone's taken us seriously. He's taking the whole show very seriously indeed. Regards it as a full-scale attempt to subvert the government of this country. But the question is, who by? Perhaps we'll find out at dinner tonight. Excuse me. Find out what? Who's behind it all? John Cornelius here. Oh, it's Ian Sanderson here. Oh, hello. Hi. I I've just seen Sir Graham's car pull up outside your door. But I think the chauffeur's coming to you first, so I'll be down in a couple of minutes. Oh, well, thank you. See you in a few moments, then. Aye, fine. Bye. Bye. That's odd. It's very odd. Something come up, John? No. Well, at least... What? Oh, that was Sanderson. He rang to say McLuddon's chauffeur is on his way up for us. Hmm, simple courtesy, surely. Well, I don't know. He, he warned us once before, didn't he, Curtis? Yes, you're right. When Flora got killed. You think he's trying to warn you again? It's possible. Hello. The trouble is, once a mutant, always a mutant. We can never be sure. Here goes. John. Yes? Be ready for anything. Mr. Cornelius, keep your body right behind the front door all the time. Don't worry, I will. What about me? You, Professor, keep clear of this doorway. Okay. Mr. Cornelius? Yes, we won't keep you a minute. Just about ready. Stay out of the way, Professor. Look out, John, he's got a Keep out of the way. John, are you all right? Well, I, I'm still in one piece, I, I think, but I, I'm shaking like a jelly. Well, that's probably just the reaction. Yes. What about him? What about him? Have you ever seen him before? Yes, he was watching Sanderson's apartment this morning. And then we saw him talking to Schooler at the bank. Schooler? Yes. The preacher fellow from your island. Yeah, that's the one. Now, I wonder what brings him to town. Well, that's something else we may learn during dinner. This dinner party, where's it meant to be taking place? Oh, that's a, that's a Graham McLuddens. McLudden? Yes. You mean the merchant banker? Is he involved? Oh, boy, and how? Well, his chauffeur certainly was. And you're determined to go through with this uh, dinner? Quite determined. In spite of all that's happened? Because of all that's happened. You know you could be putting your head in the lion's mouth. Well, let's hope it doesn't suffer from halitosis. Oh, I like that, John. <laughs> yeah, you're better. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone? Oh, help yourself. What are you going to do? You'll require transport, won't you? But where's Sir Graham chauffeur? Well, what's happened to him? Why don't you tell us? We were actually ready when you phoned. And then we stood around waiting for nearly half an hour. Oh, that's strange. Very. Especially as the car was still parked in the street. I presume it was Sir Graham's car. Oh, I am sure of that. Well, I can't think of any place a chauffeur'd go without his car. Perhaps he couldn't take it with him. Oh, 
The McCluddens won't think it very funny either. I would already half an hour late as it is. Mr. Ian Sanderson, Mr. John Cornelius, and Professor Curtis Lark. Oh, I thought you were never coming. We very nearly weren't. Well, what happened? Did the car not arrive in time? Uh, oh, no, the car arrived, mm -hmm. but the chauffeur didn't. Oh, well, perhaps he ran out of petrol. Now, why couldn't we have thought of that? Let me introduce you to the chief executor. Good evening, Professor. You, Reverend Schooler. Mr. Cornelius. Of course, you know my cousin Donald, don't you? Cousin? I had no idea you were related. Oh, a long way removed, I'm afraid. I'm bound to say I am surprised to see you again, Professor. Yes, I can imagine. Do you think we could all go through to dinner now? I think they're ready to serve. So what's this nonsense I hear about you wanting the Trust to sponsor some newfangled scheme on the island, Ian? Oh, it's hardly a nonsense, Minister. I want to set up a research grant as a memorial to my daughter. You're the... Aye, oh, Flora. I heard about that. Very distressing, that must have been. More than you can know. Mind, that girl would have been alive today if she had been left with us on the island, where she was safe and well cared for. Flora needed treatment, Minister. She was ill. Aye, she had the island sickness. There have been many that had it before you came poking your nose in, and none of them seem any other worse for it. Please, Donald. Mr. Cornelius is a guest. It's a fair point, though, my dear. I mean, I suffered from it, and I came through all right. So did Ian. And so did your butler, I believe. Joshua? Yes, I think he did. Also, apparently, the entire fellowship on Luig. What makes you say that? It was the price of the ticket. What? He means that was the reason for joining the fellowship. How do you know that? From the things Flora said... And from what Sanderson has told us? Ian? Yes. And from Hugh Dexter's notebook, of course. What notebook? We found no... No what, Minister? I'm just surprised that anything could have survived that fire at Dr. Dexter's house. It didn't. We had the notebook in our pocket by then. And he told us everything he had discovered before he was so rudely taken from us. Uh, Joshua, serve some more wine, if you please. Very well, my lady. What was it that this uh, Dexter fellow discovered? Uh, well, he discovered that, owing to some strange genetic mutation of the brain, many of the islanders, myself included, could be controlled the way a robot can be controlled. But anyone with the ability to transmit instructions telepathically. Ian, what's got into you? Ian, listen to me. A man in your position must have and must keep the confidence of the general public. Whatever you believe or think you believe, you cannot afford to talk like that, even in private. I can't afford to be a slave to somebody else's ambitions. A politician must be his own master, Sir Graham. That was extremely well said. Well, I'm only a banker. I may be a bit naive about these things, but if Ian... And others like him have been turned into slaves? Who are you accusing of being the masters? Flora Carey, for one. Ian's daughter? Oh, but that's preposterous. Yeah, we keep coming back to that poor wee lassie, don't we? And we're going to keep coming right on back to her. She was the only flaw in the pattern, wasn't she? I must say, Professor, this is even more intriguing than your book. And a damn sight more far-fetched. Oh, no, Sir Graham. You see, we've discovered the exact genetic combination that will produce a mutant child. A slave, as you call it. Mm, what we don't know is the exact genetic combination that produces an infant controller, one of your masters. We were hoping one of you would enlighten us. Why us? Well, I suggest you direct that question to someone who breeds thoroughbreds. <laughs> It's not so far removed, Sir Graham. We're talking about another form of selective breeding. Very selective. And to the point of not pairing people who might produce unwanted controllers, like Flora Keary. Only her mother ruined everything by having an affair with Ian. Ah, oh, I've never heard such nonsense. I told you, Graham. It's not nonsense, and you both know it. In the end, it was the reason Flora had to be killed. 
wasn't it, Sir Graham? What? You had one controller too many, didn't you? Aye, and now we've got a pair of meddling busybodies. That's enough, Donald. There's no point in abusing our guests. They're intelligent men, after all. They must realise their predicament by now. What predicament? Oh, of course. Curtis, I'm sorry. I should have realised. You should indeed, Mr Cornelius. Aye, with all your fancy training, and you could not work out that it might be another woman. If there's still any doubt in your minds, just watch. Listen to me. Concentrate. Concentrate. Look around you, gentlemen. Ian Sanderson, my husband, the butler. <laughs> Aye, and a whole house full of servants besides. Look at them carefully. Don't you notice something strange? They're blank looks. Not one of them has a thought in his head except to carry out my instructions. Lady McLudden? Who'd have thought it? Well, you should have done, especially after Flora and my sister. Your sister? Molly Kyle. Molly Kyle was your sister? What were you trying to do, Minister? Keep it in the family? Aye, something like that, Professor. Huh. And you were just riding on her coattails, power by proxy. <laughs> it figures. They say you didn't figure it earlier, then. That was your big mistake, Professor. What do you intend to do with us, Lady McLaughlin? Well, I have only to will that you should be taken out and killed. And you will be. With a chorus of zombies chanting, kill him, kill him. <laughs> no, they don't have to chant. You can have it in complete silence, if you like. Could we have them praying for our eternal souls just to keep the minister happy? The time for the wisecracks is well past, Professor. Outside, now. And please, let's not have any unpleasantness. It would be such a pity to ruin such a delightful and informative evening. Oh, yes, of course, and blood stains are so rough on the carpets. Precisely, Professor. I knew you'd understand. Perhaps you would precede us into the garden, please? Just to the edge of the lawn, if you would. That's far enough. What now? Now we wait for the helicopter. It shouldn't be more than a few minutes. The bank own an air taxi service. Sir Graham often uses it to get him to the airport. Is that where we're going? Yes, Professor. We booked a flight to New York for you. And Cornelius and Sanderson were going to see you off. Were going to see me off? Yes. Unfortunately, the helicopter crashed, killing all the passengers. What about the crew? The pilot's one of my mutants. He'll do what I will him to. You mean he'll just kill himself, like some kamikaze pilot? If I want him to. Ah. Ah, right on time. It's no good looking round, Professor. There's no way out. Nowhere to run to. Even if I did run, Lady McLudden, I've no doubt you could will a whole army of zombies into catching up with me. That's right, Professor. How many zombies do you control, anyway? All right, Lady McLudden, stand quite still. The party's over. Manson. And about time. Kill him. Kill him. Kill careful, him. Manson. Be careful. She's the controller. Him. Call him up, Lady McLudden. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Call him up. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him! Kill him! Kill him. Kill him. Oh, Where what? am I? What's been happening? Mr. Cornelius, Professor, uh, you were right. Fine, Manson, fine. You left it rather late. Yes, I'm sorry about that. My wife. My wife. What's happened to her? Caroline is dead, Graham. They have killed her. What? Oh, no. Caroline, my dear. Damn you, Lark. Damn your interfering eyes! Look out, Scola! I half expected he would have a gun. Rather hoped he would, actually. What about Lady McLudden? She was unarmed. But why should she bother with the gun when she had a whole army of instant zombies at her command? That's what I was thinking. Well, I suppose that's the end of this business. Is it? Why, except for picking up the pieces on Luig, I mean. Perhaps you'd allow me to look after that. You? Obviously, I can't continue in politics. I'm too big a security risk to ever achieve high office. 
And that's what it's really all about, isn't well, can't it? Can't you stay on the back bench? Oh, no, 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 I don't think so. I'd keep remembering my ambitions. It'd hurt too much. No, I'd rather do something useful back home in Lewig for a while. Until I can think it over. What about Sir Graham? Poor man, I don't think he understands what's going on. Ah, not surprised. It'll take quite a lot of explaining, believe me. Yes, Ian. And you might be the best person to do it. Aye, I'll try. No, what about you, John? What will you do? <laughs> Return to surgery before I lose my touch. <laughs> and you, Curtis? Oh, I shouldn't be surprised if I've got quite a lot of traveling to do. <laughs> what, back to Borneo? All over the place. I don't believe we've seen the end of this business. Oh, surely, Curtis. No, seriously. I mean, Lady McClutton came from Canada. The next controller could come from anywhere on Earth. They could spring up like mushrooms. Oh, no, don't start that again, Curtis, please. Start what? Anything. My dear John, I think it started already. That was the final episode of Aliens in the Mind, co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius, with Richard Herndl as Sir Graham McCludden, Joan Benham, Lady McCludden, Fraser Carr, Ian Saunderson, Henry Stamper, Donald Scholar, and Andrew Sear as Manson. Electronic effects for the series were by Chris Jenkins. Aliens in the Mind was written by René Basilico from an idea by Robert Holmes. Production by John Dias. <laughs>